Okay, so we're going to look at uh, 5.8 today, which is just analyzing graphs and polynomials. This should not take that long. Uh, it's only going to take us one day in class. We're not going to spend any more time on that. So let's get right into this. Uh, basically, this is just bringing everything together that we've done up until now. Um, zeros, factors, solutions, and intercepts. This is just a concept that we should know. We've talked about this. Basically, what we're saying here is that zeros factors, solutions, and intercepts are pretty much the same thing. They're just written a little bit different. So zero, k is a zero of the polynomial function. So that would be like saying, you know, two is a zero. And if two is the zero, then that means the factor will look like x minus two. That's a factor of the polynomial. Same thing as a zero. If two is a zero, then two is also a solution of the polynomial equation, f of x equals zero. And then the x-intercept is 2 would be the real number. If 2 is the real number, then 2 is the x-intercept of the graph. They all mean the same thing. Important for you to know that. So using this then, it means that if I give you a function that looks like this, and we talked about this in class recently, if you're given something already in factored form, you should know right away what your intercepts are or what your solutions are, what your zeros are. They're all the same thing. So I can write out that my x-intercepts or solutions are x equals negative 3, because that's what makes this 0, and x equals 2. So the point is that if I'm going to graph this function, I already know what my x-intercepts are. So I'm going to plot x equals negative 3 on my graph, and I'm going to plot x equals 2 on my graph. So now, before we graph this, what we're going to do is we are going to just create a table. Real simple. Now, I, I get that you have a graphing calculator and you can put this in your graphing calculator, but this is being able to do it without a graphing calculator. I don't know if that's how many x values we want to use or not. We will see. So we're going to use, what I'm going to do is we're going to pick values that are to the left of negative 3. So I'm just going to pick one value. It's going to be negative 4. And then I'm going to pick a couple of values that are in between our zeros. So I'm going to go negative 1, 0, and 1. Those are easy values to use. And then I'm going to use a value to the right of it. So I'm just going to use 4 again because I use negative 4 over here. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values and I'm going to plug them in to our equation up here and get a y value. So when I plug those in, I get when I plug negative 4 in, I'm going to do this quickly, I get negative 6. When I plug negative 1 in, I get 3. When I plug in 0, I get 2. When I plug in 1, I get 2 thirds. And when I plug in 4, I get 14 thirds. And then all I'm going to do is just plot these values. So we have negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. We have negative 1, comma, 3. 1, 2, 3. We have 0, comma, 2. We have 1, comma, 2 thirds. We have 4, comma, 14 thirds. So that's 4 point something. Doesn't really matter. We don't have to be exactly on. So based on our graph here, we can take a pretty good guess at what the sketch is going to look like. So that's our next step, is to sketch the graph. And again, we're going to do the best that we can here. And it looks like this one will touch and go back up. And we don't know that for sure unless we were to actually put it into a graphing calculator. But it looks like that's what it would do. And again, it doesn't matter if you're exactly right or not, but that's the general idea. So now, based on looking at this graph, Okay, we're going to talk about a definition here, or kind of not really a definition, but a term. And it's called turning points. Turning points are where a graph changes directions. So if you notice, this graph right here, at this point up here, it's changing directions. We're going up, going up, going up, and then we're going down. That's called a turning point. We're going down, and then we're going up. That's a turning point. Okay, so basically, if you're going from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, that would be called a turning point. The y coordinate of a turning point, turning point is called a local
maximum of a function if the point is higher than all the nearby points. So this graph up here, this point right here would be a local maximum because that's where it's going from increasing to decreasing and it's generally higher than all the points that are around it. And then as such, if we keep going here, the y coordinate of a turning point would be called a local minimum of a function if it's lower than all the nearby points. So again, it follows that this would be our local minimum. So if we look at turning points and some of the key concepts about that, turning points, the graph of every polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus one turning point. So in other words, if we have a function that's degree five, then we will have at most four turning points. It doesn't mean we have to have four turning points, it just means we will have at most four turning points, four or less. Okay, if we have a certain number of real zeros, if we have n distinct real zeros, in other words, no imaginary numbers, then it will have exactly n minus one turning point. So if we have a degree five function and we have four real zeros, then we will for sure have four turning points. Or sorry, five zeros. If we have five zeros on a degree five, then we will have four turning points. Okay, so now let's actually talk about turning points and x-intercepts. So here's our example here. We want to find, or we want to be able to identify our, our x-intercepts and the uh, points where there's a local max and a local min. We're going to do all of this using the graphing calculator, so follow along on the calculator. If you need to jot down the steps of how to do this, I don't think it's that hard. I think it's very similar to finding the x-intercepts, so just record your answers down. That will be important. So we're going to use the graphing calculator, and I've already got the uh, equation pulled up. So we've already talked about x, uh, the x-intercepts and the zeros. So let's real briefly review that, and we will get our values here. So we're going to go second, calc. We want our zero. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take our left bound, and we're going to find the one all the way to the left. Okay, and remember, anywhere to the left works. So there's our left bound. Go below, you get your right bound, and then you hit enter a third time for your zero, and you will see that our first zero is negative 1.137. Okay, so you can go ahead and write that down. Then we find our next zero. Again, I'm gonna go do the left bound, so I'm gonna stay to the left of the zero, hit enter, go to the right of the zero, hit enter, and we get our zero is 0.2887, so write that down. Then we find our next zero. Left bound enter, right bound enter, enter a third time. Our next zero is 1.8157, so write that down. And then let's do our last one. And you can see how quickly you could actually do this. It doesn't take that long once you have a graphing calculator in your hands. Okay, left bound, enter, right bound, enter, and enter again. And our last zero is 5.033 or 2. It doesn't really matter. I'm not that worried about you rounding. Okay, so those are our four zeros. So now let's talk about how to find maxes and mins. Real easy. Second, calc, same thing as we were doing before. And we have minimum or maximum. So I'm going to do minimum first. So I'm going to hit 3. Now here's the reason why it's important for you to understand what the difference is between a min or a max is, which should be obvious, but we're going to do it anyway. So let's find the first minimum, which is all the way over here to the left. So what you want to do is you just want to pick a point to the left of where that minimum is. So I'm going to hit enter. And amazingly enough, it's going to be exactly the same as the zero. Hit enter again on the right bound, and then hit enter a third time for the guess. And it will tell you that your minimum is negative 5 or 0.5697. So write that down as one of your minimums. Okay, you also probably want to write down your y value. So write your x value and your y value down for that minimum. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find, we can do the other minimum, but we're going to do the maximum now. So let's go to the max. Again, we're going to do left bound. Anywhere to the left. 
anywhere to the right. And then we hit enter again for our guess. And again, our maximum value is x equals 1.1075, and our y value is 5.1086. So make sure you write both of those down. And then our last one is going to be a minimum. So let's do that real quickly, so that way you can write down your answer. Just in case we have a quiz on this. So left bound enter, right bound enter, and then the guess, you have x equals 3.962 and y equals negative 43.037. So that gives you an idea of how to find your maxes and mins on your graph. That's an important uh, tool to be able to use. So let's move on. Okay, so I want to go through a story problem here, and I think it's important for us to actually go through this. So let's just read through this, and we're going to talk about how we're going to attack this. So you're making a rectangular box out of a 16-inch by 20-inch piece of cardboard. The box will be formed by making the cuts to, uh, shown in the diagram and folding up the sides. You want the box to have the greatest volume possible. So right away, I'm seeing greatest volume, which means that I'm thinking max. And that's what we just got done talking about is our maximum. So it wants to know three questions. How long should we make the cuts? What is the maximum volume? And what will the dimensions of the finished box be? So basically what we're going to be doing here is probably finding some type of local maximum. So we're going to be using our calculator to do this. So the first thing is, is let's talk about volume. Volume we know is length times width times height. So we know what the length is. But remember, the length of the box. So we only want this portion right here for the length which means the entire side is 20. So therefore, we're going to do 20 minus, and we have two x's here that we have to uh, subtract off. Okay, so that's our L. Our width is only going to be this section right here. So it follows that it's going to be 16 minus 2x. Again, we have an x here and an x here. 16 is the whole thing. We have to minus off our two x's. So that's our width. And our height is just x. If you look at the height right here, it's just literally going to be this section right here, which is just x. Okay? So, therefore, what we can do is we don't really need to multiply this out, but we could. You could multiply this out. You don't have to. If you did multiply it out, it would equal 4x to the third minus 72x squared plus 320x, okay? But you could leave it as it is up here. It doesn't matter because we're just going to use the calculator to do this. So you could put it into your calculator like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and use the calculator to find what our maximum value is. We just got done doing this. Now, let's be clear about something. Because of our restraints and because we're actually using measurements, our x value has to be between 0 and 8. So 0 is less than x, which is less than 8. And the reason for that is, is if x was 8, then that would be, a, that would be 16. So therefore, we can't have the edges be, you know, 9 or 10, because then we, it, it defeats the purpose of what we have here. Think about what this is. Our width cannot be less than 0. So it's got to be less than 8, otherwise we'd have a width of 0, which is impossible. So what we do is we just simply take this equation, we plug it into our calculator, and we find the maximum. So when you do this, you will find that x is approximately 2.94, which means that we're probably going to use a width of 3. So let's answer the questions above to finish this off. How long should you make the cuts? Well, it's approximately three, so I'm going to make them three inches. The maximum volume of this, we would take the three and plug it into our equation to figure out what that maximum volume is, and you get 420 inches cubed. And then what will the dimensions of the box be? Well, if we know that our x value is three, then we just put those in to each value, so we know that it's going to be three by 10, by 14. So hopefully that makes sense on how we set that up and uh, bring questions to uh, class tomorrow.